everybody. How are you today? And welcome to the Wealthy Lala Show with myself, Lori Larson. Today is episode 224. How awesome is that? <laughs> so yesterday, if you guys listened to yesterday's show, I did introduce my Hey Lala. So like the old kind of Dear Abby thing. So if you do have a question and you would like me to address it, it can definitely be anonymous, no problem. Uh, address it on, if you'd like me to address it on the show, uh, you can email me at thewealthylala at gmail.com. Or of course, if you want to message me through Instagram, that's fine too. Anyways, I'm kind of excited about today's show. I was just doing dishes and wondering what I wanted to talk about. And it popped into my head what I've been experiencing the last, you know, couple weeks. There's been a real ask in my world to change and to not live with, I know it sounds dramatic when I say suffering, but really suffering is even the little things. And so if we don't make the word suffering significant, um, it's, I really get, it's for me, it's when I'm not truly being myself. It's when I'm not allowing myself to be myself, choose for me, enjoy my life, honor me, acknowledge me, you know, no matter what I'm going through. Okay. And so I've really had a lot of things come up this last week or two, you know, where I felt so wrong about myself. Like it's so subtle and so insidious. And as I've been looking at different things, I realized that it's like I was a hoarder of thoughts, feelings, and emotions that weren't contributing to me. Now, are you, are you without even knowing a hoarder of thoughts, feelings, and emotions that are not contributing to you? Now, I wanted to look up the definition of hoarder. And uh, it says, uh, a person who hoards things, synonyms are um, collector, saver, accumulator. And so to me, <laughs> I'm like, how many of us are an accumulator over the years of thoughts, feelings, and emotions that actually don't serve or contribute to us? So even something as simple as um, sometimes when my husband teases me, it feels like, he always thinks I'm crazy when I ask him, um, but it feels to me like he's making fun of me and it feels like he's calling me stupid because he'll kind of laugh at me and whatever, yet you can't find it in his world. He's actually not doing that and yet I take it that way. And so I was sitting there and I was looking at that and I was like, wow, there's a place where I still have such an auto responder auto response in my world where I will take something like that personally. Now, that's not saying in a different situation that might not be the case. You know, someone might be making fun of me. And in this particular case, he wasn't. So I've just been looking at and, and it's like I can perceive in people's world. It's like, really, Lori? Like, it just seems like you're being too picky about this. And I know I'm not. I used to actually be made wrong for being overly sensitive. You're thinking too much about that. You're overthinking it, uh, overanalyzing, whatever. And what I know now is I was actually on to something. Now, what I was choosing back then may not have been constructive. It may have not got me where I wanted to go, but it was certainly a place to start, you know, and um, that's what I was doing. So my, my fascination with people, my fascination with, with how we work, with what works for us, with, um, what gets created with the things that we thought, that we think, that we feel, that we emote. <sighs> I just 
discovered in my world how much I've been an actual hoarder of things emotionally, like thoughts, feelings, and emotion. And, you know, I, I was talking in one of the last couple of shows about how my knee was, has been sore. And so what I do with most anything in the event that I think about it <laughs> and it comes to my mind is I will ask a question. So I will actually ask the question like, um, okay, so knee, you know, everywhere I'm hiding what's going on here, everywhere I've suppressed it, everywhere I'm not sure exactly what's going on, everywhere I've decided that it's something and it's not, everywhere it's, I've concluded that it's something that it's not, universe, can you please show me what it is? Now, what's really fascinating here, not just one second. Okay, I just had to grab a book that um, I wanted to. It's called The Secret Language of the Body. And uh, when we have something going on with our body, we can actually go to some of these reference books. Now, again, all of these books, everything, take it with a grain of salt, ask a question. What's true for me may not be true for you. And this is the beauty of knowing heavy and light, and it's the beauty of asking a question. So uh, one of the things I wanted to do is I, I have about four of these different books and I went to knees with them and I wanted to see what there was. And as I was looking at it, how, you know, okay, wait till I tell you guys this. The knee is an articulation point of the leg responsible for mobility and flexibility. It carries the full weight of the body when standing, walking, running, or bending. It plays the primary role in standing from a sitting position, going up and down stairs, or simply lifting. So uh, this reference pertains to any problems inhibiting the natural movement of the knee and to pain in the knee joint. So this is an emotional block, according to this one book. Knee pain, stiffness, inflexibility reflects inflexibility in your perception of the future. It occurs more often in those with an arrogant or stubborn personality who are unable to bend to new ideas or to the ideas of others. An inflexible attitude keeps you from finding easier ways to face your future and guarantees dis-ease in going forward physically and psychologically. Um, it also, it says under mental block, it says your body is providing a painful reminder that you are not as flexible as you want to believe. I was like, ouch. It says, remember that your body will warn you of the things you are not conscious of. You don't have to fear losing control by bending to the will of others. And then, of course, it goes on a little bit further. Now, there's another book. So that was from actually the book Your Body is Telling You, Love Yourself. This is another book that says, um, for knees, contributing factors, possible contributing factors. Again, this is where you got to use your awareness, control, blame, judgment, anger, resentment, frustration, and flexibility. Feeling stuck, difficulty dealing with a person, issue, situation from the past, confusion, frozen desires, and unfulfilled dreams, unresolved family issues, difficulty making decisions, keeping commitments, fear of moving forward, or a great need to know what will happen next. And then it's got a difference for right and for left knees too. Now, that's, uh, that's like, oh, well, Lori, that pretty much covers everything. Well, actually, no. And again, you have to ask what's actually true for you. So as I was reading this, and because my knee has been so loud, I'm like, okay, show me. If there's places in my life where I am not as flexible with my thinking, that I'm way more stubborn or inflexible than I thought, will you please show me? Now, what's interesting is I was in a conversation earlier today with someone and they called me on something and I was like, what? And they said, you know, Lori, you've been telling that story. It's not the first time I've heard you say it. You were saying it with such a programming that I almost couldn't even get in there to call you on it. Now, this person doesn't just come and just sort of call me out on everything. They asked me a question too. Um, they were just expressing the energy that I was coming across with it. Now, what's really interesting is I was up in the night with a couple of things. My body will do that. It wakes me up at night when, I, when there's something I 
um, it would do good for me to deal with if I want to. And it's just at night, I'll actually listen, you know, during the day, I'll distract myself. And, and of course, that's getting better and better, right? And I could perceive the difference of when I was telling this story, there was such a solidity, such a conclusion to it. I was such a hoarder of the emotions, the rightness, the conclusions around that situation. And then with other things that had come in the night, it would sound like something I could be a victim to. I was at the effect of, um, you know, things were projected on me or done to me, whatever. But the, there was a big difference in my willingness to just receive it and to be able to turn it and then do, e I did actually some EMDR on it in the night and it changed. Um, there was a will, there was not that same willingness to change this story. There was a real hoarding of wanting to be right about it. And it's like when I've suggested before that we can be swimming in water, we're a fish swimming in water, that we don't even recognize that we're in water, that someone almost needs to call us out, like maybe it's really shitty water and we're so used to it and someone calls us out on it until someone calls us out on it or we've asked a question and we allow someone to offer us some information because <laughs> oh, we always have a choice <laughs> you don't have to take anything that anybody offers to you uh, including me and uh so i as we talked longer I was able to, as this conversation went here and then went there and then different things that we've read, heard, seen, all of a sudden I could perceive the difference and I was like, oh my God, I can see where I'm not allowing myself or I didn't know that I wasn't allowing myself to be open-minded in this particular area. I was so solidified in it. I was so right in it that I couldn't even see that I was. So anyways, how awesome is that? So I've allowed it to just sort of unfold as the day's gone on. And then I chose to do some EFT because I was actually, what, the way I was seeing my knee was being very rigid, like very rigid in my thinking. So I actually went on YouTube, found some emotional freedom technique knee videos and a couple of other ones and uh, cause couldn't find one on rigid thinking. Um, I can't believe I'm the only person. <laughs> but I did some tapping around it and I did change the energy, like the energy around the subject. And then I actually, because I had typed in knee, emotional freedom technique, YouTube gives suggestions on the side and gave me a suggestion of a couple of self massage videos. So actually when a certain joint is really sore, if you actually massage the above it, like the muscles above it and the muscles below it, depending on where the pain is, that can actually help give some, you know, just give some mobility in the whole thing. So anyways, I <laughs> was so grateful. And I realized that my ask from a few days ago of asking what was this knee stuff? What was it? That that's what brought me to today. And I was really, really grateful too, because as I was looking at this knee stuff, and I was seeing my rigidity, <laughs> my inflexibility, and my, uh, you know, um, especially inflexibility. <laughs> I was like, oh, this could have been such a pride issue for me for before. But then when I realized if I'm functioning from it and it's not working for me, I'd actually rather not function from it anymore. And I am ready to change it. The judgment wouldn't help. So I actually allowed myself to be a lot of space with it and be kind to myself and uh, just let it be. And, you know, it was even funny because I even... Uh, watched a movie and then chose to just massage above my knee, below my knee, put uh, one video said olive oil is really great for joints. Um, so that felt light to me. I chose it. And so I sat and watched a movie while I did a little body self-love care. I have a little more ease with it. I definitely feel better in my head about the whole thing. And as with anything, when we usually change our 
thoughts, feelings, and emotions and get them a little more in line with the future we'd like to create, which is a body with ease and vibrancy and flexibility. That's usually much easier to come when we're not rigid in our thinking. So ah, as adorable as I can be, I can choose inflexibility and rigidity too. Ah, gotta have a bit of variety in this, folks. So yeah, you know, so just I really invite you that, you know, if you're brave, if you're courageous, you can ask the universe to show you where your thoughts, feelings, and emotions are not working for you and then see what shows up. And just please don't judge yourself. Yeah, just be kind. And how awesome is that? So anyways, that's that for today. You guys, thanks again for listening. And uh, if you guys ever have any questions, would like to book a session, reach me, the wealthy Lala at gmail.com. And if you're ever inspired to share this on social media, share it with any of your friends, tell them about it. it doesn't even have to be on social media. I would love that. So thank you. If this has contributed to you in any way, <sighs> how does it get any better? Big hugs to you guys.